What's going on, YouTube? Reason coming at you once again, baby. And I said that I was going to do a video after my last, uh, my previous video. At the end of it, I gave a segue, so to speak, into my next video, which was going to be a departure from my usual video game stuff, just temporarily, just for this one video. And it's basically going to be my defense of a movie that is considered the one of the worst movies of all time by the majority of the population of the entire freaking universe. But I do not share their opinion. And I'll just go ahead and tell you right away, without further ado, that movie is Jaws for the Revenge. The fourth and final installment in the classic franchise. Yes, I'm aware that it has a rare 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. For the person that would tell me that, I will tell them, and you need to be aware that I give a fuck about ratings or reviews or anything of that nature. I care about my own personal experience and feelings towards the movie. Now... I will go on record as saying that before before I do this, I want you guys to observe one thing. I have the classic Jaws. I have the sequel, Jaws 2. I have the second sequel, Jaws 3, or Jaws 3D. And of course, I have Jaws for the Revenge. I have the entire franchise, plus I have Jaws Unleashed on the original Xbox. I have the original Jaws game on the NES. I am a Jaws fanatic, okay? There's very little to... Probably nothing that I do not know about this film and the production of it. Speaking about the original Jaws and many, many things about the, the sequels, including Jaws' Revenge. Okay, having said that, I will acknowledge right off the bat. This might be a two-part video. I don't know. We'll see how we go in time. But uh, I will acknowledge right off the bat that, yes, Jaws for the Revenge is chock full of technical errors. Filmmaking errors that have no excuse but to be in film. Uh, uh, no excuse for being in a film. That I will acknowledge, yes. I am not saying that Jaws the Revenge is a great movie. I'm not even saying it's a you know really good movie. I'm saying it's a decent sequel. And why am I saying it's a decent sweet sequel when the rest of the world thinks it's a piece of trash? I'm going to that right now. First of all, I'm just going to go over a plot, the, the plot outline of the film. Okay, Each one has a tagline. You know, Jaws is just Jaws. Jaws 2 is just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. Jaws 3 is a deadly new attraction because it took place in SeaWorld. And Jaws 4 is this time it's personal. Jaws the Revenge, this time it's personal. Okay, the movie opens up with Ellen Brody. Lorraine Gary comes back and reprises her, her role as Chief Brody's wife, Ellen, uh, Ellen Brody, from the original film. She is now a widow, as we get revealed very, uh, very early on in the movie. It is revealed that Martin Brody, Chief Brody, the, 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 the gangster from the first two movies... Died sometime after Jaws 2. We're not really sure when. He died of a massive heart attack. Uh, and it's said to, be brought up, uh, said to be brought on by the fear of another shark coming after. He had to deal with it twice. So she's now a widow. And she's living on Amity Island. This one goes back to where it all started. Forget SeaWorld. Forget Florida. This goes right back to Amity Island. It's Christmas time. And she is now living with her younger son, Sean Brody. Uh, the older son, Mike Brody, has moved to the Bahamas, to the Caribbean, to work as a marine biologist. This movie, in a lot of ways, ignores completely the existence of Jaws 3. It's as if Jaws 3 happened in some other universe. It was a spinoff or whatnot. I kind of don't like that, but, you know, I can deal with it because Jaws 3, to me, in my opinion, was the worst of the bunch. A lot of people say Jaws the Revenge was the worst. There is nothing on God's green earth worse than Jaws 3. Now, is Jaws 3 fun? I love it. I watch it all the time, cheesy as it is, horrible as it is, I love it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine, it's Jaws, and I'm a Jaws fanatic. But it is the worst by far of the sequels. Jaws the Revenge is not as bad as Jaws 3D. I'm sorry, it's not. Jaws the Revenge is actually quite good when you really understand what's going on. So, let's go through it. Anyways, like I said, she's living with her younger uh, son, Sean Brody, on Amity. He is now the deputy, not the chief. A lot of people think he's now the chief. No, he's not the chief. He's following his father's footsteps, but he hasn't quite made it yet. He is the deputy. And the movie opens up with, uh, you know, your usual sequence. So uh, Jaws' point of view from underwater as the opening credits are rolling. And then we end up in the Brody house. Ellen is cooking fish. Or Sean is helping her prepare dinner. Yada, yada, yada. Long story short, her and Sean and Sean's fiance Tiffany, are they're, they're walking somewhere. And Sean has to go to work. So he's getting ready to go to work. And they're getting ready to go pick out a Christmas tree. So he goes to work. He tells them that he won't be late. Reports in. And he is told that there is a buoy out in the channel. That has a piece of uh, driftwood stuck or jammed into it needs to be removed before the fishermen come back. So he gets on his boat and he goes out there. And as he's removing the buoy, inevitably and unfortunately, the massive great white makes an appearance, rips his arm off, then comes back for seconds and just dismantles him and the boat. 
He ends up overboard with his one good arm left, trying to hold on to the piece of wood that he was originally trying to remove. And he's pulled under water, very gruesome, very well done scene, blood everywhere, and that's the end of Sean Brody, which is kind of sad for me as a fan, because if you remember, he was the cute little chubby kid on the sand singing, Do You Know the Muffin Man, in part one. So to see him go through all the movies, two, three, and now die at the beginning of four is kind of tragic. So now Alan Brody is distraught. Mike and his, her, older, her older son, Mike, and his wife, Carla, and their daughter, Ellen's granddaughter, Thea, come to visit her for the funeral, obviously, and to console her. And that's when we get the gist of what's going on, or at least what the movie wants us to think is going on. She, uh, He comes and he's comforting her. He gives her a hug and there's a very tender scene with the two of them and she's just distraught and she just utters the words, it came for him. It waited all this time and it came. So now she, the movie's basically showing us that she's seemingly going crazy thinking that her family is cursed to consistently and always be pursued by great white sharks. And they're always coming and they're going to kill off her, her entire family. And they're only gunning for her family. Ridiculous. Yes, it is. But hold on. <clears throat> As we go further, he he is worried about her state of mind and her not being alone. So he invites her down to the Bahamas with him and his wife and the granddaughter to stay a couple days there and get her mind off of things. There she meets Hoagie, played by Michael Caine. Brilliant performance. He's, he's hilarious. Um, and uh, he is basically the love interest for her. He hears her story, he sympathizes for her, he falls in love with her, she kind of falls in love with him, and they start dating. While this is going on, Mike is working with his friends as a marine biologist, uh, is studying underwater snails, tagging them and, you know, doing all that. As things are unfolding in the Bahamas, we see a very creepy scene where the shark is swimming. And you actually see, that you, you never saw this in the other Jaws movies, the shark, just a, a shot focused on nothing but the shark underwater, swimming to a destination. And we, we can assume... It's going to the Bahamas. It's following them. It's, it somehow knows where they're at. People hated this part of the movie. You gotta hold on. As we go on, the shark shows up in the Bahamas, starts attacking people, attacking things, attacks Mike and, and his friend Jake on their barge when they're on the ocean studying the snails. Mike, There's a very awesome underwater suspenseful scene where it attacks Mike in the submarine and actually chases him into a sunken ship, and it's crazy. He escapes by the skin of his teeth. Uh, other scene where it attacks... The granddaughter who goes on a ride on a banana boat and kills the lady who was right behind her. Uh, so the shark is gunning for them. Every time they step near the water, the shark shows up and he's gunning for the brodies. This leads Ellen to just basically say the shark is taking it too far. She jacks Michael's boat and goes out to sea because she knows that even though she knows know the first thing about sailing, all she's got to do is get out there and the shark will find her. And she wants to have a showdown with the shark. She's like, basically, bitch, that's it. We going at it. Knock down, drag out. One of us ain't leaving, basically. She's like, that's it. I'm fed up. You know what I'm saying? So she goes out there. Mike finds out about it. Jake, Mike, and Hoagie go off on, on Hoagie's plane, because he's a pilot, to try to find her. And they do. They crash down in the water, and they try to save her. And that sets up an epic showdown between the humans and the shark for the final time. Okay, that's the plot. That's basically what happens throughout the movie. Reasons why this movie is not as bad as people say it is. Okay. What's the first complaint? They, they complain that the shark is psychic, that the shark is, now they're trying to make it seem like the shark is only after the Brody family. You have to remember when analyzing a movie or a piece of literature or a game or anything of that nature, you have to analyze the context and the time in which it was happening and what was going on in that time. This movie came out in 1987, 1988, roughly, okay? That was right smack dab in the middle of the 80s slasher horror craze. Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, uh, Hellraiser, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All these movies permeated that time and were so popular and making so much money. And after the huge debacle that was Jaws 3D... Universal wanted to take Jaws and give it the slasher treatment. They wanted to turn the shark, they wanted to turn Jaws into not just an average great white, but basically a horror villain, a horror icon. Okay, so they gave him these supernatural tendencies where the shark always knew where the Brodies were, where the shark knew where they were going, knew how to get there, was, was basically kind of linked to them. And there are scenes in the movie, and in, in, in this movie in particular, where you see that Ellen is psychically or in some telepathic way in, interconnected with this shark. There's a scene where she's digging a sandcastle with her daughter near the water in the Bahamas, and she's backing up, and as she's backing up, the water comes up to her ankles, and she realizes that she's in the water, and then she hears the shark. Now, of course, sharks don't roar. This is 
There's a supernatural element to this. And for those people saying, oh, the shark roars, that's stupid. Motherfucker, the shark roared in Jaws 1, okay? In the original classic that everybody loves, the goddamn shark roared. And we know the sharks don't roar. So stop with the nitpicking. This is the 80s, all right? Anyways, she hears the shark roaring and she stands up and it's like she's connected. There's another scene where, where Michael's being attacked on his barge in the ocean. She's in the middle of a festival somewhere else in the Bahamas and she just stops and she senses that he's in trouble. She is linked to her children and to the shark supernaturally. Now... A lot of people say that it's as if the shark of the family's been cursed, and that's the spin they're trying to give it. Well, very good. That is the spin they're trying to give it. But they didn't do a very good job of it in the film. But the novelization of the movie that came out, the actual book, goes into detail about how this curse came about. And it basically deals with a voodoo priest, which is very prominent in the Bahamas and in the Caribbean. Voodoo is a voodoo priest has a, set, a score to settle with Michael Brody because he it, it's, it's a racial thing, and it's also a... Uh, uh, tourist versus natives type thing. He is not comfortable with Mike Brody receiving grant money for his research from the natives. And there's many altercations that happen between them in the book and one even turns physical. So he has a score to settle. So he basically casts this voodoo curse on that great white shark for it to come after not only Mike Brody, but his granddaughter and ultimately his bloodline. So that's why the shark seems to have a supernatural knowledge and strength and just the shark is the shark can do everything in this movie. That's why they don't explain it in the movie, but it's in the book. Okay. Now, what you do see clearly in the movie is that they're trying to give Jaws the shark a slasher horror icon type of vibe, where it's not just an animal now, like it was in part one. This is a possessed being. This is a this is a this is like a Freddy or a Michael Myers or a Jason coming after, like Freddy goes after the Elm Street kids, Jason goes after the campers in Crystal Lake, uh, Michael Myers goes after his sister. This shark goes after the Brodies. And that's why it's Jaws the Revenge, this time it's personal. Okay, is it cheesy? Yes, weren't all the other horror uh, movies of that time and uh, slashers cheesy? Yes, but we still loved them, didn't we? We trashed this movie because we put it up against the epic blockbuster one of the greatest movies of all time that was the original jaws and you cannot do that because the original jaws even though there's some things now that we know about great whites that obviously are wrong with jaws back then they didn't know that and according to the information they have back then jaws is pretty accurate for back then and it's just about an animal this has made it more personal it's made it more of an entity that's after this family okay that's what they were going for is it as good as the original Jaws? Fuck no. Is it as good as Jaws 2? No. Is it better than Jaws 3? Fuck yes. Okay? And it's a decent sequel for what it was trying to be. You know, you know what I'm saying? They were trying to take the Jaws franchise in a brand new direction, in a, in a horror slasher type direction, supernatural direction, something different. Instead of just doing a, a standard sequel like Jaws 2 was. And not trying to do something stupid like a 3D Jaws like the third one was. That was the whole purpose of the movie. That's why I say personally that to me, it's not that bad of a movie like people want to make it seem. It's not great by any stretch of the imagination, but if you're a Jaws fan and you understand the background of what's going on here in the Jaws universe and in the books, then you understand, wait, wait a minute, the movie is not that bad. What, what is bad is they did a bad job of translating what was going on in the movie because there was nothing about that voodoo curse in the movie. We saw the evidence of it, but we didn't see or hear the cause of it or, or that it was even there. But when you read the book, you see that the voodoo, the, there's a voodoo priest that cast a curse on the shark, and there's a whole bunch of stuff about that. I think Hooper's even mentioned, the original uh, Matt Hooper is mentioned in that book. Anyway, that's basically my defense for the movie, man. Uh, I think it gets a lot of shit for no reason. I think it's a fun movie. <clears throat> you can't go in there expecting an ultra-realistic uh, shark movie like Jaws 1 was, for the most part. You gotta go in there expecting a campy slasher horror type movie in which the killer is a shark. And in those movies, the killer is always supernatural, always knows what's going on, always is unbeatable, and that's what the shark is in this movie. Nothing wrong with that. You know I'm saying so. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me hear your comments and all that. I know I'm gonna get a bunch of flack for this. People telling me I'm crazy, it's the worst movie in the world. Yada yada, whatever. Bring it. God bless y'all. Stay gaming and watching movies. Peace.